Oh, hi friends. How does the ball come back to me? It bounces back from the wall. Now if I shine this torch on the wall, can you see that the light is bouncing from the wall or it's getting reflected by the wall? Now what happens when I speak? Does sound also get reflected by the wall? The answer is yes. And this video is going to be about the reflection of sound. In this video, we look at echoes, 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 and reverberations. Did you hear those sounds? That's exactly what we'll be exploring in this video. And then we'll do our top three exam oriented questions on this topic. I'm sure by the end of this video, the concepts are going to be super clear to you. Sound and light are energies and as we saw, they can get reflected. Let's compare the reflection of light and sound. What do you need for the reflection of light? That's correct. A mirror or a polished surface is a good reflector of light. But now if I ask you this, what about the walls, tables and chairs, even you and me? Are we reflectors of light? The answer is yes. Because that's how we see the world around us. It's through the reflected light from the objects. Now let's look at sound. What do you need for the reflection of sound? The answer is it can be any surface and it need not be polished. So any surface can reflect sound. Now if I ask you, if you compare the wall and the curtain, which is a better reflector of sound? That's right, it's the wall. Because typically, large and hard surfaces are better reflectors of sound. When I shine this torch towards that mirror, the incident ray would go like this. And the reflected ray would come out like that. Light obeys some laws of reflection, which are the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal, they all lie on this same plane. Now the question is, does sound also obey the same laws of reflection like light? What do you think? The answer is yes. So let's imagine there's a wall here. Now when I speak, the incident sound would go like this. And the reflected sound would come back like that. Following the exact same laws of reflection. You're observing the reflection of light all the time in your everyday lives. Because when you look at something, it's due to its reflected light. But when do you observe the reflection of sound? Is it happening all the time as well? The answer is yes. But then why are echoes so uncommon? It's because our ears are not sensitive enough. And that's a good thing. Otherwise, our discussion would sound something like this, like this, like this. Can you please turn off the echo? Thanks. Let's place the concepts we have learned so far on our concept board. The two main phenomena that occur due to reflection of sound are echo and reverberation. Now, what's the difference between these two? In echoes, there is a time gap. So you hear two or more distinct sounds. For example, an echo sounds something like hello, hello, hello. So you can see that they are distinct sounds. But a reverberation sounds like hello. So there is a continuity of the sound. And that's called persistence of sound. It's happening due to overlap of multiple sounds. Now let's look at both of these in detail. 
Let's look at echo first. Try saying the word hello in your room. Did you hear any echoes? No, because the room is small. Now let's imagine you're on a holiday to the hills or mountains. So go there and shout hello, hello, hello. Did you hear those echoes? In fact, we can hear multiple echoes. So what's the difference? Because both the wall or the hills and mountains, they can reflect sound. So let's understand how the big space helps us hear these echoes. To simplify, let's imagine there's one hill. Now when you shout hello, the first hello that you hear is almost instantaneous. Since the sound is traveling from your mouth to your ear. Now the second hello travels to the hill and then it gets reflected back to your ear. The ear needs a minimum time gap of 0.1 second or one tenth of a second to distinguish between that first hello and the second hello. So that's how this large distance between you and the hill helps. Since sound takes at least 0.1 second to travel back to your ear. Now why is the second hello softer than the first one? It's because the hill absorbs some of the sound energy and the remaining gets reflected back. As we saw, the minimum time gap for you to hear the echo is 0.1 second. Now how do we calculate the minimum distance between you and the hill so that you can hear the echo? For that, let's use the formula distance equals speed into time. The time here is 0.1 second. Now let's take the distance between you and the hill as d. But what is the distance traveled by sound here? So as you can see, sound is traveling twice the distance. So in the formula, we are going to put it as 2d. Now what is the speed of sound? So let's take the average speed of sound in air as 340 meters per second. So if you plug in those numbers, we get d as 17 meters. So the minimum distance between you and that hill needs to be 17 meters for you to be able to hear the echo. Of course, when you go to the hills, the distance is much larger than that. And that's why we can hear the echo really clearly. Let's pin the echo stuff on our concept board. Now let's look at reverberations. A reverberation sounds something like, hello. So it's that persistence of sound. You might have heard these when you speak in these large halls, auditoriums, or a large dome. In these places, there are multiple reflections of sound, which causes these reflected sounds to overlap with the original one. Now, typically these reflections need to be within 50 milliseconds or 0 0.05 seconds for you to hear the reverberation effect. And you can remember it as it's half of the echo value of 0.1 second. So that leads to the persistence or the continuation of sound, which causes the reverberation effect, or it's also called as reverb in short. Let's place reverberation on our concept board. Is reflection of sound good or bad? What do you think? The answers, both. It has many good uses, such as horns, trumpets, sonar, stethoscopes. We'll discuss those details in another video. But it can also be irritating, for example, if in an auditorium there's too much echo. 
So how do they minimize echo in an auditorium? You might have noticed they use these thick carpets and thick curtains. And that's not just to give it a rich and grand look. They are trying to minimize the echo. But if there's too much absorbent material, then the sound will be dull or lifeless. You might have heard of the term bathroom singers. A person's voice sounds more lively in a closed space. It's because of the reflection of sound or the reverberation. So in acoustic engineering, there's this fine balance between sound absorption and reverberation. And that's how they design these auditoriums and halls. Another example where I felt the effect of reflection of sound is when I was shifting to my apartment. Now the railway tracks is pretty close by. So when we were moving in, the sound of the train seemed pretty loud in the empty apartment. But once the apartment was filled up with furniture, curtains and all the other things, suddenly the sound of the train seemed much less. So how do you explain that? The answer is that most of the things in the house are good absorbers of sound. So they reduce the reflection of the sound in the house and so the train sound seems much lesser. Now that we are done with the reflection of sound and its two types, are you ready for the top three test-oriented questions on this topic? Coming up for you. Friends, pause the video right here and try solving these questions. Let's make this more interactive than just watching the video. So do post your answers in the comments below. Or if you have any questions on these questions, feel free to write it in the comments below. And I promise to answer all of them promptly. So I'm going to disappear and let you solve these questions. So next time, when you're in a large hall, or let's say a long corridor, you can try clapping or speaking loudly and see if you can hear the echo. And do remember to like, comment and share this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, go hit the subscribe button for my channel.